if you want to see, if you want to see a dying industry, and, and there's a respect in which if you want to see a dying country, um, then look at what industries uh, the government is trying to protect. And, uh, you know, a, a dying country is a country that needs to protect its industries, particularly if those industries are cutting edge and at the forefront of technological advance. There's something very wrong. There's something dying. There's something, uh, there's a, definitely a defeatism in saying we can't compete with the rest of the world, even though we're an advanced economy. So we're going to build big walls around the country. I think that's true of immigration, but that's even more true of uh, industry and economic activity. We're going to build big walls around it to protect our local industries, particularly uh, when this has nothing to do by any stretch of the imagination with, let's say, national security, real national security, not uh, pretend, uh, uh, you know, uh, make belief natural security. And that's what's happening clearly right now in the United States with uh, the whole field of electric vehicles. Biden will announce, I think, today or tomorrow, the day after, one of these uh, days soon, uh, Biden is going to announce 100% uh, tariffs, 100% tariffs on uh, Chinese electric vehicles. He will announce uh, a significant increasing tariffs on batteries and on uh, a bunch of minerals that are used in order to uh, facilitate electric vehicles. He'll also probably announce, I mean, this I'm kidding, but it's, but, but not really. He'll probably also announce that at the same time, uh, he is not going to allow us to mine for those minerals in the United States because of a variety of different environmental concerns. So uh, no mining uh, for the minerals that we're going to put a big tariff on to prevent them from coming in from China. I'm not sure where we're going to get them from. Uh, and, and certainly we don't want to become self-sufficient uh, in it. I mean, how the, the reality is, I mean, the, the multiple realities are, one is 100% um, <laughs> tariff on automobiles imported from China. Does anybody know how many electric vehicles were imported this year from China, last year from China? The number is exactly zero. The number is exactly zero. But the reality is that China builds better electric cars and dramatically cheaper electric cars than the United States. I'll say that again. It builds cheaper and better. You can pretend Chinese electric cars are garbage, but there's no evidence of that. Chinese electric cars are about as good as anybody's, including Tesla. And they sell for about half or a third in some cases. And Chinese companies are making a profit. Now, you could compete, you could try to, or you could fold which is probably what we should do. Or you could keep throwing valuable capital, valuable resources, valuable money after, you know, a dying industry. You know, the United States automobile industry basically died in the early 1980s when Chrysler, you know, came close to going bankrupt and was bailed out by the, by the I was going to say Biden administration, but of course, it wasn't the Biden administration. It was... The Ronald Reagan administration that bailed out Chrysler. It then kind of recovered. It recovered because of uh, minivans and then SUVs. You know, Americans are very good at building big cars and very, very bad at building bad cars. At, at building small cars, sorry. <laughs> bad cars. They built plenty of bad cars. Uh, small cars. Uh, then they died again during the great financial crisis. And this time Obama bailed them out. And they are about to die because they can't compete in the electric vehicle market at the same time as the same government trying to bail them out is mandating electric vehicles. I mean, there's a, there's a challenge for you. We want to bail out our, our, our car companies, but our car companies cannot build EVs, but we want EVs, so we're going to... I don't know. I'll just let my head explode and move on. Imagine if we'd let Chrysler go bankrupt in 1980. Maybe the auto companies would have learned a lesson. Oh, 
and by the way, at the same time, maybe eliminated some of the regulations that made it so much more profitable to build SUVs and not small cars. Maybe all kinds of all kinds of weight regulations, all kinds of regulations that are pretty dumb. But imagine if we'd let Chrysler go under and those resources are being deployed elsewhere. Imagine, and I know this is horrific, if we'd let Chrysler, uh, if we'd let GM and Ford shrink dramatically and only make the cars that are profitable. Now, for a variety of regulatory reasons they're not allowed to, they have to make small cars by, by regulation. But let's assume those regulations went away. Imagine how much richer we would be driving our Korean, Japanese, potentially Chinese cars, and investing all those resources in the latest, greatest, whatever, technologies that we can't even imagine, because all the capital was wasted, thrown down the toilet in bailing out all these other companies. Right. So, yes. And by the way, the government bails companies out all the time, and then uh, it, it, loans are paid back to pay back the government, and everybody says, see, bailout work. This is why I hate, uh, one of the many reasons I hate bailouts. Uh, banks, you remember the, 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 the $700 billion bailout of the banks in 2008? Every dollar, every dime was paid back with interest. The government made money off of that bailout. And what lesson does the government learn from that? Oh, yeah, this is great. We should... But we should play at central planning. We should invest uh, you know, taxpayer money in companies because we're really good at it. We get all that money back plus interest. The problem is not that the money doesn't come back. The problem is the industrial planning that this implicitly invokes. The fact that we're not letting the markets clear. The fact that we're not penalizing failure. The fact that we're not letting them go under. They need to go under. They need to fail. By the way, when they fail, they restructure. They don't disappear. And that restructuring is helpful, but they restructure to be profitable. American auto companies today, if we insist on EV mandates, probably need to go under. They won't survive. I mean, uh, this, the amazing EVs, none of them are coming from the US except with Tesla. And we haven't yet started importing Chinese EVs. Even at 100% tariff, they would be cheaper than what Detroit makes. And just as good, if not better. So the tariff is just another bailout that you will pay for because you will have to pay a lot of money for expensive automobiles. And more importantly, it is a sign. It is a sign from the heavens. No, it is a sign from the White House that we can't compete anymore, that we're pathetic, useless, and instead of competing with the Chinese, we're just gonna, we're just gonna leave the field. S a Chinese central planning better than American mixed economy. By the way, you should check out the Seagull. The Seagull is a $12,000, uh, whoops, that is the sound of a Seagull. Uh, $12,000 uh, electric car made by BYD in China uh, that drives well, put together with real craftsmanship, rivals any U.S.-made electric car, including a Tesla, and costs $12,000. $12,000. It's time America stopped making cars. It's time we let the market work. Maybe American car manufacturers can keep making big SUVs, but it's time they stop making small cars and it's time we let them. It needs to fail. And, uh, you know, if we don't want the cars to come all the way from China, I'm sure, I'm sure Mexico would be happy to make EVs for us uh, and we can rely on that. It, it's, uh, you either believe in competitive markets or you don't. And uh, there's nothing unique about automobiles that says they have to be made in America. German cars, great. I'd much rather drive a German car than an American car. Much rather drive 
a Japanese car than an American car, most of us would. Then why are we insisting on using our tax money, our tax money, to bail out Detroit? You know, companies that are not efficient, not effective, and which the unions, uh, because of all these bailouts, are milking for every last dime. I think knowing that they better milk them for everything they can now, because in the future these companies won't exist, so get as much as you can right now. Um, all right. Tariffs. Uh, uh, you know, one thing we can count on, no matter who wins the next election, is there going to be a lot more of them. And uh, that just means your costs are going to increase, American companies are going to be less competitive, and, uh, you know, uh, we're going we're gonna to continue, uh, actually, we're going to continue, we're going to intensify the uh, stag economic stagnation that now seems to be faded for this country because we now live in a world where both political parties agree on one thing, and that is that Americans should not be allowed to compete on the world stage. Government should be there to protect us at every corner. Government should be there to protect our fragile industries, our fragile businesses from competition from other countries uh, and, uh, and make sure that uh, Americans win big. And again, doesn't matter, Democrats, Republicans. It, it, it's all the same big government, big intervention, uh, uh, you know, uh, industrial planning BS.